Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is Sunday, July 21st, 2019. 6.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States and Rochester, New York. I am going to do a video today sort of about schizophrenia, sort of about mental illness, and certainly about sex. Um, maybe I'm kind of late to the party in making this video, but um, it just occurred to me that um, this whole thing flies, this whole thing about incels, involuntarily celibate people, usually men, like Elliot Roger, and believe me, I don't want to have to mention his name. He's already got enough coverage in the press and YouTube and everywhere else. It kind of gives me a headache to make this video, but I figured I'd have to do it. Um, so I'm talking about incels, and what I want to talk about is mental illness, sex, violence, misogyny, psychiatric medications, therapy. It all has a lot to do with incels. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that society has made is to tell people that sex, regardless of what kind of sex it is, straight, gay, romantic, hedonistic, long-term, short-term. Um, of course, I'm talking about consensual adult sex. Um, we have taught people that if you get sex, you are happy, um, which is not true. There are plenty of people who are not sexually frustrated, who are violent. Um, getting regular sex, consensual adult sex, does not mean you're going to be happy or be nonviolent. How many relationships today, be they gay or straight, or transgender, or polyamorous, or whatever, how many of them still contain violence in them? Um, domestic abuse against women and sometimes women against men, domestic abuse in gay relationships, um, alcoholism and violence, child abuse, sexual abuse, date rape, um, drugs, beating your own children. These things go on among people who have regular sex. The problem I have with the whole concept of incel is that it's an oversimplification of the problem. If sexual frustration led to violence all the time, I would have been violent a long, long, long time ago, but I never was. I never shot any supermarket or store or school up. Partly because my father was a decent human being and he knew how to teach me the right from wrong. He was a rational man. Um, and that's one of the things that may be a problem with incels is that they see their families as being broken or destroyed. Fathers are not present. Mothers are sometimes not present. Um, you grow up in a family like that, that sort of helps produce the Elliot Roger Rogers of the universe of the world. Um, Elliot Rogers was mentally ill. To say that he became violent and killed women and men who date women just because he was sexually frustrated is oversimplification. Now, he may have thought that his not getting sex was leading to his violence, but he was a cringy, mentally ill, creepy person to begin with. He blamed his problems on not having sex on not being able to get a girlfriend or get a date. Um, but his problems ran much, much deeper than that. He was severely mentally ill. And yes, he meant he saw many therapists. And according to the Wikipedia article on him, it's ridiculous that they would even write a Wikipedia article on him that's like giving him the attention that he wanted. But they, but anyways, he um, blamed his 
desire to commit violence against women in the sorority house um, and men who date women when he couldn't get any women. He based it on his sexual frustration. But something tells me that even if he had a girlfriend and had regular sex, he was disturbed enough where he would have found another excuse to commit a violent act. Um, he had been prescribed uh, Risperidol, according to the Wikipedia article, and he was not made to take it. For those of you who don't know, Risperidol is an antipsychotic medication. I'm on two antipsychotics. I'm on Heldol and Seroquel. And um, I take them voluntarily. I have since I was like 18. Not those specific drugs, but different drugs over the years. Um, because I understood, again, because my father was a rational, decent human being and he was present in my life, I realized I had to take responsibility for what was happening to me. I got bullied. I got kicked, my, my ass kicked in during elementary and high school. I did all the insult, I had all the insult traits, no sex, no girlfriend, um, alone in college, the whole nine yards, but I didn't shoot anybody. I didn't kill anybody. Because sexual frustration can easily be relieved through several different avenues that are perfectly legal, um, which I don't need to go into the details about. All right, I will. Porn and jerking off. There you go. There's your solution. But anyways, I've been in life situations where I was in cell for quite a long time, involuntary, involuntarily celibate. And then other times where I had plenty of sex. But in either situation, I didn't feel particularly happier just because I was getting sex. But I also wasn't getting violent when I didn't have sex. And it was a lie that I bought into that once I got sex, I would be happy, which didn't turn out to be the case. Um, part of what Elliot Roger did could be blamed that nobody forced him by court order to take his medication, his Risperidol. Or some other antipsychotic. Um, he saw therapist after therapist after therapist since like he was eight years old, according to the Wikipedia article. Um, but nobody forced anything on him as far as mental health treatment, and they should have. And he should have been involuntarily hospitalized because I believe his parents, according to the Wikipedia article, called the police and told him that he had guns. He had weapons, and the police refused to put him under mental hygiene arrest, as it's called in New York State, and bring him to the hospital. Um, I've gone to the hospital plenty of times, um, sometimes involuntarily, and the result is I haven't killed anybody. I haven't shot anybody. And yes, I'm virtue signaling. Um, but seriously, if Elliot Rogers had been alive during the 1980s when state hospitals were still open where there were more private mental hospitals he might very well have been forced into a hospital and taken care of properly but since the 1980s actually since the 1960s state hospitals and private mental hospitals have been closing leaving a dearth of psychiatric beds for people who need them the most the violent and the suicidal and the mentally unstable the police who interviewed Elliot Roger before he committed all those murders, um, believed he didn't meet the qualification of involuntarily holding him and taking him to a mental hospital. And that's usually because there's not enough psychiatric beds to help those who need them. Um, the mental health system has collapsed since the 1960s. It started out with good intentions to give mentally ill people freedom and their civil rights. The intentions were good, but the results were disastrous. Mentally ill people being homeless, mentally ill people turning to violence, mentally ill people turning to suicide, mentally ill people not taking their medications and living miserable lives, even if they don't shoot anybody, even if they don't attack anybody. Um, we spent virtually no money on hospitals that are needed and never should have been closed. I'm not advocating going back to the state hospital system because I partly understand why state hospitals are closed. 
they were closed because some of them are snake pits. But I spent eight months in a mental hospital in Rochester Psychiatric Center in Rochester, New York, when I was about 19. Eight months is a long time, but it was helpful. And eventually I went to college afterward, again, without shooting up sorority houses or anyone else for that matter. Um, it's an oversimplification to say sexual frustration leads to incel violence. And incels have been sold the bill of goods that only if they had sex with a real woman or man, I suppose in some cases, um, they would be happy. That sex was the key to happiness, and it's not. Um, like I said, just look at all the relationships where sex is a regular thing, but violence is still part of those people's lives. Alcoholism, like I said, child abuse, date rape, drug abuse, domestic abuse. Having sex doesn't stop violence. And not having sex doesn't cause mass murder by itself. That's fucking ridiculous. I mean, I'm living proof of that. This whole no fappy movement, well, sometimes fapping is good. It gets rid of frustration. Um, I kind of wonder what would happen if Elliot Roger had been forced to take him into psychotic when he was younger and forced into treatment in a more forceful way by court order. Would he have done what he did? I'm not sure. I can't predict the past or the future. I can't be a couch uh, quarterback, as it were, after the fact. I only know my own personal experience, and my personal experience is that the mental health system in the United States has collapsed and been replaced by prisons and jails, jailing mentally ill people, giving them treatment in jail after they've committed a crime, a violent crime in many cases. Believe me, I don't want to go back to the state hospital system, but replacing state hospitals with jails and prisons is not a solution for the mentally ill. And it's not less expensive, by the way. A lot of mental health, mental hospitals are closed because of money budget problems. Believe me, New York State is probably spending more money on mentally ill people for being homeless and being in jail and prisons than they would have if they just kept the state hospitals open. Because jails and prisons are snake pits too, more so than a state hospital. But the mental health system in the United States has collapsed with the help of idiots like the Church of Scientology. Um, which has a thing against psychiatry. I can only go by my own personal experience. Elliot Rogers was severely disturbed. He should have been forced into treatment for as long as necessary. We've become too worried about civil rights in regards to the rights of the mentally ill. And just in case you're wondering, this is Ice Cappuccino, 7-Eleven. Caffeine's not good for people who are mentally ill, but what the hell. Um, so I blame incel violence on the collapse of the mental health system. It's not just about misogyny, that's certainly part of it. But again, blaming it on misogyny is an oversimplification. Elliot Rogers probably would have found another excuse to be violent, even if he had sex on a regular basis, or had a loving relationship. He was creepy, he was cringy, he had no social skills, and when he talked to women, he probably did it in a way that creeped them out. Um, he had tools that he could have used to not only get a girlfriend, but avoid all the crap that he did in the first place. He had tools, he had a nice car, he wasn't an ugly person. Intellectually, he wasn't completely stupid. Um, he was articulate, but he either couldn't or wouldn't use tools to learn how to have better social skills, learn how to take rejection, and then realize there are other fish in the sea, that kind of thing. Um, if he had just taken some responsibility 
for what he was doing that was turning women off, um, he might have been a little bit more successful in his romantic life. I've been down that road of no sex, too much sex, um, sex in general. But again, I can only go by my own experiences. I have certainly felt sexual frustration, but I didn't shoot anyone. And I didn't become an alcoholic. Well, actually I did, I stopped drinking. Um, taking personal responsibility for your own behavior instead of blaming other people is key. And some people who are incels have severe mental health problems. Long before they even started considering their sexual situation, they probably had mental health issues as very, very young children. Um, now, can psychiatry prevent all violent mass shootings? No, I'm not claiming that. I'm just saying we could probably reduce the numbers of some children who are obviously violent and potentially psychotic as they get older. They should be able to be forced into a mental hospital with a parent's approval or against their approval. Um, Elliot Roger, I keep saying Elliot Rogers, for some reason that seems, sounds more normal, but his last name actually didn't have an S at the end, I believe it was Elliot Roger. Um, he had opportunities to make himself more attractive to women and he failed to pursue them. He wasn't intellectually stupid, but he was a social moron who had no social skills. He couldn't even, no self-awareness, no, no inner reflection at all on the problems that he created for himself. Um, so we've got to rebuild the American psychiatric system. We need to stop selling sex as the key to happiness. There's nothing wrong with having sex, that's not what I'm saying, but it's not the one end all be all of happiness um having sex doesn't prevent violence um so we need to stop telling everybody that unless you get sex you're not going to be happy um we need to rebuild the american psychiatric system with private mental hospitals being reopened the cost of not doing so is Elliot Roger and people like him. I'm 53 years old. I'm starting to get to the point where I, um, sex isn't as important as it used to be, um, which I don't necessarily regret. Uh, I've had my fair share of both being an incel as well as having girlfriends. Um, stupid notification on my screen here. Um, as long as we keep teaching people sex is the end all and be all of all happiness, as soon as we don't rebuild the American psychiatric system, as long as we refuse to pay money for psychiatric services, as long as we refuse to force people into mental hospitals, if we refuse to listen to people like Elliot Rogers, Elliot Roger, Rogers' parents, as long as we ignore those warning signs, that kind of violence unfortunately will continue to happen. I don't know what all the solutions are. I wish I did. I could only say that violence happens even with sex. I, in the end, am only responsible for my own behavior, but I felt the need to make this video. I know Elliot Roger is sort of like a old story at this point. He killed people in 2014, I think it was, and it's 2019. But as a mentally ill person who didn't shoot up anybody, 
I thought it was necessary to make this video. If anybody has any comments, suggestions, like the video, share the video. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't sound very clear in the way I speak in this video. It's just that I didn't write a script for it and I didn't want to write a script. I didn't, I just wanted to see if I could say what was on my mind. Um, I'm in no danger of becoming violent or suicidal. Again, yes, I'm virtue signaling. I take my medication. For those of you who are curious, I take a held all shot once a month in my right or left arm in the muscle. There's enough medication in that shot to last four weeks. But I also take held all by pill. I take Seroquel by pill daily. Um, a couple other psychiatric drugs. Um, and for those of you who hate psychiatry and say that psychiatry never works, I point to myself. I never shot up anybody in my college. Got my associate's degree. Went on to do other things. Now I'm 53, and again, never owned a gun, never shot anybody, never had a desire to shoot anybody. Um, and again, part of that is lack of good parenting, and my father was an excellent parent who raised 10 children alone, and his strength and stoicism probably kept me from going way over the edge didn't stop me from becoming mentally ill, but my father instilled in me certain values about human decency and common sense and pragmatism. So like, subscribe, dislike if you want to, um, put suggestions or comments. I don't censor anybody. I'm not going to block comments or anything like that. Um, any suggestions that I don't have, put them in the comment section or make a video response to this one and send it to me. I don't mind seeing responses to my videos, even if they're against what I said. Um, I'm probably going to be up all night for drinking that cappuccino. My psychiatrist really doesn't want me using caffeine. Um, so like, subscribe, share.